What is going on today guys? My name is Alex and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about open differentials and why they suck off road. If you guys have been following the channel, you know this is my truck and you know that my truck has two open differentials, one in the front and one in the back. So today we are up um, at Mount Prevost, not quite at the top, but pretty close. We got some nice views down in the valley. We got some fog rolling in, fantastic, but the sun is still out, so it's gonna be okay. We are gonna put this thing through some paces. It's not gonna be the most extreme off-road test out there, but it's gonna show you the limitations of an open differential pretty clearly, and that's what I hope you guys get to take out of it. As well, I will be diving into the mechanical side, scientific side of how open differential works and why it sucks, um, as well as maybe talking about what a locker does and um, the mechanical aspects of why a locker is a lot better um, in the off-road atmosphere. So stick around and I hope you guys enjoy the video because we are gonna go have a little bit of fun. I do this for you guys. Jesus. All right, here we go, guys. Got the back end pretty pretty hung up here. Um, like I said, we're not gonna go crazy. I could easily pull out of this in four wheel drive, but I just wanna show you guys, first and foremost, what an open differential does when you are in some sticky situations. Most likely this wheel is just gonna spin, and that one will not spin at all, because if it did, it would probably just pull out this truck from the crap it's in. Um, so here's the other side. You can see that this wheel really is not uh, hung up by any means. So if I did have a locker, this wheel would spin and most likely just pull the truck out without having to be in four wheel drive. All right, here we go guys. This is the driver's side angle. Um, as you can see, the driver's side rear tire just spins freely like I said it would and the truck really doesn't go anywhere. Um, and just a sec, we'll flip to the other angle. There we go. And uh, as you can see, the passenger's rear wheel doesn't really spin at all. And if it did, I guarantee this truck would just pull out without any issue. All right, guys, we're gonna jump into the scientific or mechanical side of what just happened there. Um, we're going back to the whiteboard. Little shout out to Engineer Explained. Um, I'd love just to use his clips because he explains everything perfectly, but YouTube isn't gonna like that. So I'm just gonna try and replicate it as best I can. So here we go. We got the open differential. So we're gonna start with your pinion shaft comes in. It's gonna turn your crown gear or ring gear, which is attached to your differential carrier, which is then going to spin your spider gear assembly through the cross shaft. So this is gonna spin as one unit when the wheels are driving straight um, or have equal friction to them. So basically this is gonna spin as a unit and it's gonna transfer equal power torque to each axle shaft and to each wheel. Now, if we move over here, we can see that in a turning situation, one wheel has to spin a greater distance or travel a greater distance than the other, um, which basically means that each axle shaft is gonna end up turning at different speeds. So if we go back to our differential carrier cutout here. So what's gonna happen as these axle shafts start to turn at different speeds, this spider gear assembly is gonna start to rotate and that's what takes up the slack from different wheel speeds or different axle speeds. If we didn't have that spider gear assembly or spider gear action, what would happen is this inside wheel would skip because this outside wheel is spinning at a greater speed and in order for this wheel to also spin at that speed, it's gonna have to skip forward. So that's why most vehicles have open differentials because it's a great way to allow engine power uh, to be transferred to, to both wheels in turning situations or situations where one axle or one wheel is spinning at different speeds. Now, what's important to note, how this relates to what we just did. So if you come over to my beautiful drawing over here, fantastic, I'm an artist. Um, you can see this fantastically drawn mud here, and this is uh, more or less 
let's call it a tire on a grippier surface. So, um, as we saw, the tire in the mud spun and this tire didn't really spin at all. Going back to our cutout again, torque takes the path of least resistance. So, if we have more friction, let's say on this axle or this wheel, torque is going to come in to this carrier and it's going to want to go out to the wheel with the least amount of friction. And so that's exactly what we saw. This axle stayed put as power came in through the ring gear, through the carrier, through the spider gear assembly, which rotated the spider gear around this gear as it stayed stationary and then put transferred power out to the left wheel. Now the only way to get away from this is if we actually somehow lock these two axles to the actual carrier and then force the whole carrier to spin each axle at the same time. And so that's what a locking differential does. And if you don't have this, we're going to end up in a situation where one wheel is going to get more power than the other, especially when there's a difference of friction of the surfaces that your wheels are on. All in all, this is why open differentials suck off-road because the wheel with the least amount of friction is always going to spin, whereas the wheel with all your traction, which is what's going to pull you out or pull you through whatever you're going through, won't spin or won't get power to it. So there you have it. Um, there's a simplest real-world test with an open differential. Um, obviously, one wheel just spun and the other one didn't. Um, next off, we are going to show you even in four wheel drive, how open differentials can really let you down in kind of the simplest situation. So we'll go do that test next. Here is another good example um, explaining why open differentials really are terrible off road. And to even show you guys furthermore that really in four wheel drive, only two wheels with an open differential setup are gonna get most of your power. So I love this example. I don't know, I call this like when you're when you're high topped or whatever. When basically two wheels are either completely in the air or have very limited traction. Obviously, um, this wheel isn't totally in the air. It is touching the ground a little bit, but for the most part, it's gonna have no traction. This wheel will have tons of traction. And again, this wheel, although it is touching the ground, will have very limited traction. And obviously where I've completely bottomed out the suspension on this side, my poor mud flap, um, will have a lot of traction. But as we'll see, with open differentials, the wheels with traction, this one and the other front driver's side wheel, will not get power. Only the wheels in the air or with limited traction will get all the torque, all the power. So on even the most modest of off-road trails, as in this, just this little ditch, I will have trouble climbing up this. Obviously, I'm not too crazy stuck. Like, if I back up, I'll come out no problem. And even if I probably mash the pedal, this thing will climb it up. But what's important to notice is that it struggles. If I did have a locker in the rear, I would have power to this wheel, which has tons of traction because a lot of the weight of the truck is actually on that wheel. And that would easily just pull me up and over this little ditch or ravine. Enough of me talking. Let's explain or let's show you guys what happens? We're in four wheel drive lock. Traction control is not turned off, fair warning. But I just want to show you guys what's going to happen with two open differentials. Now, hopefully, the cameras one and two pick that up pretty easily. You're not going anywhere on a simple, small um, obstacle like this. Okay guys, we're back to the old whiteboard just to briefly explain what exactly happened there. So here we go, you got your engine, got the power coming through your transmission, and it's going to be split at your locked transfer case, um, theoretically delivering equal power to your front drive shaft as well as your rear um, drive shaft. So if we come into the rear, we have again our open differential. Um, so, if you can remember, our left hand wheel was kind of floating in the air there, as you can see by my beautiful artwork. 
And so as we just talked about, torque takes the path of least resistance. So it's obviously gonna take the path to the tire up in the air. So this tire is gonna spin. On the other side of our open differential, we have our high traction tire and that will not get any power. Now moving up to our front drive shaft, again, if you can remember, the driver's side wheel had all the traction or was the high traction wheel and our um, passenger side front wheel was kind of up in the air and had very limited traction. So that's where all our power went. And so that's kind of exactly that situation. And that explains why only two wheels of the four will spin. All right, there you go. Obviously um, a little more speed, a little more power, truck overcame that small obstacle, no problem. But the point still remains, even on some slightly uneven territory with four wheel drive on, open differentials are gonna struggle um, with bringing the truck over those types of obstacles greatly. So once again, another real world test showing you that open differentials are terrible off-road. Now my third and final example um, of why open differentials suck um, with some real world testing is a clip I've shown a couple times on my channel. I'm sure you guys are getting bored of it, but it's just such a good clip and shows exactly why open differentials suck. And it actually confused some of you guys, which is exactly why I'm making this video because some of you guys were saying that even in four wheel drive, at least three wheels should spin, which is, which is incorrect. Um, with two open differentials, only two wheels will spin, which is exactly what makes sense. You'll see in this next clip I'll put up on the screen that just the driver's side wheels were spinning front and back. The passenger side wheels, one and two, didn't spin basically at all. Here we can really see the downfall of having open differentials on your truck. You can see the passenger side wheels really don't turn at all, which is kind of crazy. Um, and I guarantee if I did have even one locker or both differentials locked and having all four wheels turning at the same time, I guarantee this truck would have just pulled out with relative ease. All right, guys, our last time back to the drawing board here. So in this situation, very similar to the last, except our driver's side front and rear were receiving all the power, whereas our passenger side front and rear didn't get any power. So as we can see, the snow on this side by my, again, wonderful drawings is a little bit deeper, which means there's probably a little more friction for these wheels to turn. And as we said earlier, torque follows the path of least resistance. So the wheels with the least friction, uh, the driver's side in this situation, will spin all the time, whereas passenger wheels will not. Now, finally, the only way to actually ensure that all four wheels are gonna spin in every situation until there's literally a mechanical internal failure is if first we have a locking transfer case, which most transfer cases do anyways, but we have to have a locking front differential and a locking rear differential. And when we have all three of these things, this will ensure that all four wheels will spin in four wheel drive no matter what until you break something. Well, that's gonna wrap up the video for today. Hope you guys maybe learned a thing or two um, about open differentials and again, why they are not the best for off-road. Not that you can't take them, but you're probably gonna get stuck. Just saying. Um, got the truck all nice and muddy for you guys. Well, muddy. I'm sure some of you will tell me that this isn't muddy, that this is a pavement princess, that I wasn't even off-roading, but I look forward to it and I look forward to your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Anyways, guys, enough of me. If you did like the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Helps me out, helps the channel out. Um, and if you guys like stuff like this, mechanical stuff, off-roading, truck stuff, um, maybe think about subscribing. I am nearing that thousand subscriber mark, which is uh, pretty incredible. Um, but anyways, I will see you guys on the next freaking video.